Okay, wonderful. Well, good morning, everyone. And thank you all so much for taking some time out of your busy morning to join us to learn about the MCHAT RF. Um, my name is Dr. Teresa Northington, and I am the Developmental Screening Coordinator here at the Bureau of Family Health, and I will be facilitating this morning's um, session. As we go through the webinar today, if you have any questions or comments at any point, you can go ahead and um, put those in the chat or in the Q&A section, and I'll try to get to those as I see them or at the end. Just a little disclosure statement to begin. Hi, Teresa Northington, faculty for this educational event, have no relevant financial relationships with ineligible companies to disclose. Okay, so let's begin. Um, first, we're gonna take a quick look at our overview for today. We are gonna begin with a look into developmental screening and the Louisiana Developmental Screening Guidelines the importance of the screening tool for autism, uh, followed by a deeper look into the actual MCHAT RF and details, current Louisiana legislation around autism, and how to implement screenings into your practice. To conclude the session, we will have a few minutes at the end where you can ask and, and answer questions and um, get a little bit of additional resources that we might have for you. So first off, why developmental screening? Um, if we take a look at our statistics around the state, 37% of children in Louisiana are at moderate to high risk for delays in school readiness, and 42% of Louisiana parents report having concerns about their child's development. For parents and caregivers, providing every opportunity for their child to be healthy is their number one priority. Those parents want their child to develop an interest school and um, be ready to succeed. But unfortunately, for many Louisiana children, this is not the case when we look at these numbers. If we look at those statistics, we can see a very great need um, in the state to provide parents, families, and educators with information to assist these children. Um, and that information begins with developmental screening. So as we take a little bit deeper look into the statistics here around our state for developmental screening, we can see that um, from the 2020 and 2021 data from the National um, Survey of Children's Health, we can see that only 24.2% of parents reported completing a parent completed developmental screener. And of course, that would mean 75.8% of parents did not complete a screening tool um, during that time. And now if we take a look at this data juxtaposed with the national um, data, we can see that our average here of 24.2 is a bit lower than the average of uh, the national average of 38, 34.8%, which is why we're definitely having this great push in uh, for developmental screening to get those rates up, even hopefully beyond the national average. In 2016, a work group composed of relevant content experts convened to create the Louisiana Developmental Screening Guidelines. These guidelines provide a clear-cut outline of what is to be screened using very specific, reliable, and validated screening tools. Today, we will look at the second domain that you see on the chart here, which is autism. To screen for autism spectrum disorder, the recommended tool is the MCHAT, which again is is the Modified Checklist for Autism and Toddlers revised with follow-up. Within the guidelines, you will also find the periodicity schedule, um, which indicates the timelines to give screenings recommended by the American Academy of Pediatrics. For autism, it is recommended that the MCHAT um, RF screening tool be given at the 18th and 24 um, month well child visits. So now that we know a little bit more about the tool and Louisiana statistics, let's take a look at why we should screen for autism spectrum disorder. 
So to begin with a little bit of um, information about our state legislation, um, and last year we uh, saw that the, H the bill HB 827 came into effect, and that is, the title of it is the Provide for Screening of Children Under the Age of Three for Autism Spectrum Disorder. And the law requires any physician who provides early and periodic screening, diagnostic, and treatment services, also known as well child visits, for a child under the age of three to determine whether the child has previously been screened for autism spectrum disorder. So basically the physician or whoever it is that is providing this early care um, just kind of needs to probe and see if a child has been previously screened for ASD. Additionally, if the child has not been screened for autism spectrum disorder, then the physician shall cause the child to be screened for such disorder. Stipulates, however, that no such screening shall be conducted upon any child whose parent or tutor, commonly known as legal guardian, objects to the screening. So if that child has not been screened, um, law requires that a physician or healthcare provider to screen the child for autism spectrum disorder um, with a recommended screening tool. Of course, we recommend the MCHAT, but it could be another tool as well, um, unless the parent objects to their child being screened or a legal guardian. So in addition to the legislation, another couple of reasons why we should screen for autism spectrum disorder is that um, ASD can very reliably be identified by age two. Most children with ASD are not diagnosed until age four or later. So if we think about that, um, here. If we think about that, when a child with a special need such as ASD can be screened and diagnosed at age two, but is not until age four or later, that means that that child has lost out on two or more years worth of services and support. But um, for a child with a special need, learning disability or delay, two years just isn't two years. Two years can equate to double or triple that time in developmental progress, which is another reason why screening for ASD is so important. Um, that early detection can greatly improve a child's development and gain access to the supports and services that they truly need. For these reasons, we can also say that early detection is key. Super, super important. Early detection and identification can make all the difference in the life of a child and their family. As a kindergarten teacher for over 15 years, I saw many, many children um, come to school, some um, with parents who had a suspicion and others who had no idea if their child was in need of extra support. That child would begin in August. Um, and we would take a few months to gather information data on the child and monitor and report to administrations the concerns that I would have. And then by that time, it's October. Um, then, you know, we get to November and, and we start the process. And then it begins with, um, um, what is that, uh, Thanksgiving break, turns into um, winter break, and then we're in January, and that child may or may not have even received any services yet. Um, so we're going through all of the, the paperwork and everything and trying to get this child into um, the services, and it's maybe February before they get the IEPs um, into OT, ABA therapy, APE, and many other services. And by that time, it may be April. And just as, you know, that child may get those services, school is about to end. So we can see the progression just in, in the, the idea of school readiness, how important it is to make sure that we have these support systems, um, assessments, and uh, developmental screeners completed prior to a child um, entering school and at those um, well-child visit markers. On average, um, according to early steps, <clears throat> excuse me, in our state, it can take about up to six months. So there's a currently a six month delay to receive just the services and get into the program right now. Um, so we want to definitely make sure that we are um, getting those children into services 
screening these children as early as possible because screening does not immediately equal support services. Something super important to, to make sure that we, we are very aware of. We would love, love, love to have our screeners done and then immediately after um, get those children and their families into the correct supports. But unfortunately, due to many different um, causes and um, circumstances right now in our state, um, that is not the case and there is up to a six month wait. So we wanna make sure that those children are in that, um, in a place where they can um, be in line, be in the waiting area for that. Additionally, children with one identified need often may need more than one support service. So if we're you know, just screening for autism spectrum disorder using the MCHAT, of course it's a wonderful tool, but the MCHAT also, um, <clears throat> excuse me, it also screens for developmental delays in other areas. So even if the child um, who is using or who is being screened with the MCHAT um, may or may not be identified as having ASD, other developmental delays may um, come out of that screener and may indicate that maybe there is one or more um, area of support that is needed for that child. So now that we know a little bit more about it, let's see what exactly it is. So what is the MCHAT RF? What is it? The MCHAT RF is a two-stage or two-part screening tool designed to assess uh, risk for autism spectrum, spectrum disorder or developmental delays, as I just mentioned. Um, the MCHAT RF is a 20-item caregiver reported questionnaire and the additional component is the follow-up, um, which is um, an interview conducted with that caregiver. It is designed for use in children from 16 to 30 months, and it's available in tons of languages, in 38 to be exact, including English, Spanish, um, French, Creole, and Vietnamese. And one really great thing is that it is free to download. Let's take a closer look here at it, what it actually looks like. So as you can see here, it is a pretty um, standard um, questionnaire with just yes or no answers. Um, at the top, caregivers fill out just the child's name, age, date, and relationship, their relationship to the child. It was created to be filled out in about 10 to 15 minutes and scored in less than five minutes. And sometimes we get um, questions about how this could be um, incorporated into the daily workflow. And an example of that is we have, um, upon entering your practice for a well child visit, a caregiver can be greeted and given this form to complete in the waiting room, um, as they can possibly have other forms that they may uh, need to fill out as well. We can add that one in with the others. And it, or it can also be mailed to their home to be completed prior to their arrival, which can save even more time of that well-child visit and give more time for um, patient to um, physician or care or, or provider um, time. Staff such as front office managers and nurses can be trained on how to score the tool as well. So that can also help on that time um, that is needed from staff members, from nurses, from physicians to um, give that uh, possible task to the front office managers and nurses and allow the physicians and nurse practitioners or primary care providers a little bit more time to converse with the family. Once the tool is scored, the results can be passed to the physician or nurse practitioner to review with the family. Um, once res results are reviewed and next steps are given, the front office staff can coordinate referrals and follow-up visits if needed for the child. So from start to finish, this process can be woven into your current routines. Um, and as the developmental screening coordinator here, I'm also here to provide assistance, training, technical assistance to help ensure your practice, clinic, or school site has all the tools needed and necessary to carry out screenings at well-child visits or at registration if you're um, a learning center. So now that we have seen a little bit of what it looks like, we can dive a little bit deeper into what administering the MCHAT RF looks like. So administering, administering the MCHAT RF has a four-step um, 
process. Step one is to have the caregiver complete that MCHAT RF, as we just uh, mentioned. Step two would be to score the questionnaire. Step three would be to conduct a follow-up interview if needed for items indicating ASD risk using the MCHAT um, RF follow-up interview sheet. And step four would be to share those results with the family. So we can take a quick look at step one here. As we've just seen the MCHAT um, form, we can see here, the this is a sample of course, each questionnaire consists of 20 yes or no um, items. Um, and we can also, one really um, important thing to also note when giving this questionnaire to families and to caregivers is that um, when you, they're in the office or they're in the waiting area or maybe at your registration desk, it's also a really great option to provide reading or interpretation assistance if, if possible um, while they're figuring, while they're filling it out. So then we have, we move on to step two. Once the questionnaire has been filled out um, in its entirety, we then score the questionnaire. So the scoring is a little bit tricky um, for items two, five, and 12. Yes indicates ASD risk. For all other items, no indicates ASD risk. Um, and then you add up the items indicating ASD risk. If the score is between zero and two or eight to 20, we skip to step three and go straight to step four, okay? And this is something that we definitely go over in detail when taking the um, MCHAT training. Um, just on the tool and the scoring guide itself. And we also do a little bit of practice to get everybody familiar with the process of scoring and of, um, of completing the whole, all the four-step process. So you can see here just an example of one of the examples that we provide in our training where we go through um, a sample MCHAT. We go through each um, item, score them, add up the scoring and the reverse scored as well to get the um, the result. Then we have step three, which is to follow up with each item indicating ASD risk um, from the MCHAT R using the follow up flow chart for that item. So this is um, when you download, if you have not already, when you download the MCHAT document, you'll see that there is that initial questionnaire, the 20 item questionnaire. And then after that, you'll see there are 20 pages of um, individual follow-up uh, questions. So each one, each of the follow-up questions looks like the one that you see here on the right, and it gets a little bit more into detail. So we ask those initial questions on the questionnaire, but then the follow-up is able to gain a little bit of further understanding in detail by asking a series of additional questions. Um, that may give insight to whether or not that uh, questionnaire item actually is a yes or a no. So we continue asking the questions until you have a clear pass or fail, which you can see at the bottom. And if a parent responds maybe, um, ask them whether it is most often yes or most often no. And this is also something that we go through in great detail um, in our trainings to make sure that everybody feels very comfortable um, throughout this follow-up process because it is um, very, very important to conduct this because it could be the difference between um, identifying risk and not. And then we move on once all of the follow-up questions have been um, conducted and we've reached a, a result, we go on to step four, which is to share those results with a family. And after you have, um, you've done the initial questionnaire and a follow-up if needed, um, you gather the score and pass that to the primary care provider, which could be that physician or nurse practitioner um, in the practice. And we would share the results with the family. And so these results de definitely depend on how the, the parent has responded and the uh, information gathered. If a total score is from zero to two, indicates low risk and no further action is required. But if that score is greater than three, after the follow-up interviews, if necessary, a child could be referred for further diagnostic evaluation or eligibility um, evaluation for early intervention services.
So that is a, a quick look into the process of administering the MCHAT RF. Uh, just a quick note that we wanted to also um, make sure we add in there that screening for the um, for ASD is reimbursable by Medicaid using CPT code 96110 for the amount of $10 per screening. So now that we've seen a bit of legislation, we've seen some, um, some important facts about our state, we also want to provide you with some resources. Um, screening for ASD is extremely important, and it's going to help so many families and children on their, get on their way to the results and the, um, the supports and, and services that they need. But along the way, we would also like to provide you with some additional resources to help you get started or continue um, if you have already started providing this service to, oh, I see a question there, providing this service to um, your families. So one service and one resource that we have here at the Bureau of Family Health are developmental screening office hours. So whenever it is that you may have a question um, about the, it could be an MCHAT question, it can be um, a question about pretty much anything related to developmental screening. Um, every month on the first Tuesday of the month, we hold office hours from uh, 12 to 12.30 p.m. where you don't have to um, to uh, attend the whole session, but you can come in and ask your question, get answers, resources um, as you as you need. Um, happens every month, and we love to get questions, feedback, um, any information that can help us uh, better equip um, our resources, our trainings to provide to um, families, to provide to providers. We love to see you there. Another resource we have are our here developmental screening webinar series, which is um, going for one more week. So our next week's um, Medicaid uh, webinar is going to be held from 12 to 12.30. And we're really excited because we have the chief medical officer for Louisiana Medicaid, who's going to be um, sharing with us some extremely inf important information about the Medicaid unwind policies and screenings and reimbursement. So if you're able to come back one more week, we would love to see you there. And you can also register at, using the link um, at the bottom of the screen, or if you go to the top of the screen and take a quick snapshot of the Developmental Screening Toolkit QR code, it'll take you to the page where you can also register. Um, if you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see all the links to uh, the Developmental Screening Office Hours links, as well as the links to register for the Developmental Screening Summer Webinar Series. And our last resource that I'm going to share today is our implementation and training support form, which is a wonderful way to be able to get started. Um, this form is wonderful for us because um, when you fill it out, it comes directly to us and it gives us uh, some information about the, the current needs that you're experiencing. And we're able to kind of come up with some ideas on how we can better assist you and get those trainings needed um, or just the support for whatever it is that you're thinking about related to developmental screening. So this page is also, this form is also available through our developmental screening toolkit webpage. Um, when you click on that URL or you go to the QR code up at the top, it's going to take you directly to the developmental screening toolkit page and you click on resources up in the top right and it'll take you down to um, where you can click on the implementation training and support uh, fillable PDF and it'll come right to us. And lastly here, I just wanted to share with you my contact information. If you are ever in need of um, training opportunities, information, please email me at either of the email addresses on the screen. And I would be extremely happy to, um, to answer questions, to, do, um, to fill out forms, to help you get on your way to um, ensuring that your practice is, is well equipped for developmental screening. Oh, I see a couple of questions in the chat. Wonderful. So I want to thank you so much. I'm going to go to the chat really quickly and see what we have there. Okay, let's see. First question we have here. Okay. 
So I have a question here. I say I want to make sure that the Denver first crystal cannot be used. What about the Vanderbilt form? So um, there are other um, developmental screening tools that can be used. We are just recommending the MCHAT RF. So it's not that they cannot be used. And also when you go to, um, I can put in the chat as well in the follow-up email, the list of screening um, uh, tools that are reimbursable by Medicaid. So even though we just have the MCHAT on our Louisiana Developmental Screening Guidelines recommended um, list, there are a host of other um, screening tools that are also reimbursable by Medicaid that can be used. So it's not just um, just the MCHAT, but that's the one we, we recommend. And how do we know when the monthly meetings will be? Um, monthly meetings. I'm thinking you're referring to the developmental screening office hours. They are every first Tuesday of the month at 12 p.m. So um, when you go on to the developmental screening toolkit page, you can click on um, the link to register. And once you register for one, you can register for all of them and they will pop up on your calendar every month. So you won't have to um, to go and look for them. We also share them on our social media platform. So if you are um, a subscriber to our Twitter, our Facebook account, um, then you'll be able to see the notifications that way as well. Oh, thank you, Kaylee, for putting that into the, the chat as well. Okay, let me see. And I also have one here. in the, let's see, the Q&A section. Can the Denver be used for this also? It can be, but we definitely recommend the MCHAT as it's a little bit, um, we found it to be a better suited um, screener for our population here in Louisiana. Okay, we have another one. Oh, same question, okay, awesome. No, I don't see any further questions. So once again, I thank you all so much for um, being with us today. I truly, truly appreciate it. I know how valuable your time is. And I hope to see you back next week um, to share with our, our last uh, developmental screening summer series session, webinar session um, on Medicaid and the Medicaid unwind process. Thank you all again. And just a quick reminder that if you are seeking CE or CME credit, please make sure to fill out the evaluation that will pop up at the conclusion of the webinar. And it will also be emailed to you in the follow-up email. Thank you so much again. And I appreciate you all being here. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. Thank you. Give me a call. Um, sure. Um, let's see that. Alicia, if you can, um, sure, I can put my email address back here, or you can you can email me at either one of the email addresses on the screen, and I would be happy to to um, to chat with you about the Denver or the MChat. Thank you, Shai, for attending. Have a wonderful day.